Now, we've got her for the balance of the hour. I really appreciate her coming on, shifting gears into a whole other subject, but it's on the issue of taking action and winning is our guest, Vanny Hari, foodbabe.com, who you've seen all over national television. Very lovely, super smart lady. And she's launched a lot of initiatives. The most recent was, well, I'll let her tell you about it. Now she's launching another one with hopefully great success like the other initiatives. And it's a blueprint for all of us to have victory over our food supply, our water, and have the right to have access to things free from toxic chemicals, mind and body bending systems. So tell us what's coming up in the next long segment. Uh, thank you so much for coming on and we salute your work. Thank you so much, Alex, for, for having me join. You know, I launched the Subway petition here a few months ago and won that within 24 hours. Now, I think this petition is going to be a longer fight because I am talking about secrets that have been held for decades from the beer industry. The beer industry right now is not allowed are not required, rather, to disclose the ingredients in beer. However, the government allows a long list of controversial additives in beer. And so this secrecy and this mystery has to end. The fact that nobody has held these companies accountable in recent years, I think, is a big issue. And I think that as, you know, Fourth of July comes up and everybody goes around the, uh, the grills and starts celebrating the holiday and starts starts throwing back Miller Lite and Bud Light and Miller Coors and Anheuser-Busch brands, I think people need to realize they have no idea what they're drinking. We've been blindly drinking beer and not knowing what these companies are putting in our beer. And some of the things I've found out are downright shocking. Well, they use it for social control. And Anheuser-Busch isn't even beer. For about 15 years, it's actually a chemical syrup. So folks need to understand, the reason I don't ever drink American beer now unless it's from a microbrewery, is because it's not beer. You drink German or Mexican because they follow the old uh, brewmaster things of England and Germany. And, and so I'm sure you're the big expert. Tell us about it when we come back. But this is the secrets of beer. Would you call it the beer conspiracy or fake beer conspiracy? How did you learn and develop all this? And then let's get into the secrets of beer. Yeah, so, you know, I was a, like a sick child growing up my whole life. You know, my parents had come here from India, didn't know how to cook American food, and they wanted me to fit in like everybody else. So what did we do? We bought the packaged processed goods at the grocery store that are full of corn and soy and no nutritional value. We ate McDonald's for lunch, for dinner, for breakfast. I mean, I don't, I don't know how many Father's Days um, we went to McDonald's for their free breakfast. I don't know if they still do that or not, but we used to go every single year growing up and Father's Day is coming up. And it just reminds me of that time period where, you know, if you do like a little coloring for your dad, you get a free, you know, totally uh, sick ploy like crack dealers trying to give crack to 10 year olds at the playground. Exactly. And, you know, I grew up that way and it was so detrimental to my health. I um, suffered asthma, eczema as a child, never felt well, always had stomach aches, you know. And then when I graduated college and got into the real world and started living this rat race uh, environment, working for a big six consulting firm in a cubicle, traveling, being on their expense account, eating what everybody else was eating around me instead of controlling my own food and controlling my own destiny. Destiny, I became really overweight. I became very sick very quickly, and I had to have, you know, an organ taken out of my body. Oh, my God. Uh, and, and doctors will tell you, oh, appendicitis is very random. It can happen to anybody, but I don't believe that. You know, appendicitis happens when your stomach is inflamed from all the stuff that you've been eating or treating your body with. And unfortunately, a lot of people are, are eating these, these new industrial food-like substances that are causing this inflammation. And I definitely was a victim of that. And so I decided in that hospital room back in December that of 2002, over 10 years ago now that I would take control of my own health. I would figure out what's in food, how to eat the best food possible. And what I found out was shocking. Not only did I find out that majority of our food is made with genetically engineered ingredients, never tested long-term on humans, but I found out that all of these substances that are really cheap for the food industry to use are pumped into all of our food. And so I started to reject that. I said, no more corn, no more soy, 
Uh, none of this GMO stuff. I'm going to eat organic food. I'm going to start going to farmer's markets. I'm going to find um, out what these chemicals mean on the back of packages. And when I found out that things like yoga mat material are in there and um, things like high fructose corn syrup that, you know, they find mercury in and, and how like there's all of these different additives that are used to create addiction to food like hidden MSG. I knew I didn't need to eat that anymore. And so I shunned all of those brands and, and companies long ago. And when I did that, something remarkable happened. Not only did I lose weight, but I've been able to maintain a nice figure for a really long time doing nothing but eating real food. And also all of my health issues as a child and as an adult magically went away. Alex, I'm talking about being on six to eight prescription drugs, depending upon the season, to being on zero today. Being 10 years older and having less drugs as, as a 10 years older and having more energy 10 years older than I did 10 years ago um, when I started figuring this stuff out. And when I did this, everyone around me, my friends, my family members, they wanted to know the secrets. And so I started to tell them what I learned and they were shocked. They were downright, they couldn't believe the information I was giving them on a day-to-day -day basis as I was traveling with them, you know, whether it be coworkers or with friends or family or, or at my mom's house. The when truth I is they've grandfathered for a hundred years. I know you're an expert on this, but we've had other experts on to speak about this. I don't get into beer to be able to basically put drugs in the food. The additives are toxic. Many poisons are addictive. Aspartame, you name it, MSG. They are getting you trained to eat their processed food and then they have, just like the tobacco companies, adding all these other chemicals to make it more addictive. It's just like tobacco companies, but with food. And right. and, and and I've read the, you know, the books, the documents, we've covered it, where they brag about that. I mean, as you know, Colonel Sanders made Kentucky Fried Chicken take over because he found out the Japanese military couldn't get Japanese back in World War I to eat the cruddy canned food because Japanese like good, fresh seafood. So they learned to put MSG in it. It's totally toxic and tricks the brain. He brought that here in the 20s. The next is history. There's thousands of things they're doing, and, and here you are exposing it. Let's, let's start getting into beer, uh, the, yes. the, 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 so, the big beer conspiracy. You know, you know, because I care about the ingredients I buy and I bring in my home, and you can see my refrigerator back behind me, um, the one thing I didn't know what was in my fridge because I have a husband and he loves beer was beer. Like I would look at the label and I knew nothing about it. And I couldn't believe that I knew nothing about it. And so I started to ask questions about a year and a half ago. I started an investigation and I started asking the beer manufacturer questions about what's actually in their beer, what ingredients are allowed in beer. And when I found this book published called Chemical Additives in Beer, it's actually out of publishing. It's It was in 1982 that it was released. So it was so old, but it had this list of additives that are allowed in beer. Things like MSG, things like carrageenan, which is linked to intestinal information, high fructose corn syrup, caramel coloring level four, which is considered a carcinogen in the state of California. Yeah, the truth is they, but Budweiser especially, it, it's just beer flavoring, sugar, and some alcohol they squirt in it. A lot of these companies aren't even doing fermentation now. It's not beer. Right. And they're not even using real hops either. One thing I found out that Miller Coors has patents on this thing called Tetra Hops. It's a hop extract. So it's the, the minimum amount of hops they can possibly use in beer and so like a lot there are actually health benefits to eating hops but they actually take all those out when they start using these extracts and so there's all of this mystery behind what people are drinking and people around the world it's not just Americans people around the world are blindly drinking beer and so I wanted to start a petition I launched it this morning at foodbabe.com slash beer and over 11,000 people have already signed it in less than three hours. This is a big, huge issue, and I'm opening up Pandora's box for these beer companies. It's a hundred billion dollar industry, and I'm scared to death right now. You have to have a lot of courage to go up against the beer industry, but someone has to do it. We have to stop this um, lack of transparency. We have to increase um, the amount of information consumers have so they can say, you know what? Bud Light Lime has high fructose corn syrup. I'm not going to buy that anymore. I'm going to go to this craft brewer or I'm going to go to this organic brewer and get something of quality to bring it into my home and, and feed to my husband and my family. And by the and way, uh, I mean, as we know, the microbrewers everywhere are now displacing because people drink it and go, wow, this is beer 
versus the toxic stuff that people are trained on. So beer drinkers have to get their friends off of the bad stuff. And just like you go to Target now, five years ago, all the ketchup, you know, uh, had fructose corn syrup in it. It had all the bad stuff. Now it openly, you know, says organic. So it's across the board. We were getting the BPA out of the plastic. I think this is going to be even more explosive than your past operations. And I think we're going to force the big beer manufacturers to actually produce beer because the corporate chiefs don't want to actually have to have brewmasters there and actually have to create good tasting beer. They want to just put a bunch of fake syrup together that tastes like beer and beer flavoring. You know, we want real root beer with real sarsaparilla. We want real beer that actually, you know, is organic and grows well. That's why they're losing such a market share. I saw the number that they've lost like 45 percent. Saw it in the Wall Street Journal last year in the U.S. of their market to micro and local brewers. The way they counter is to try to buy them up. But, but you know, no, why don't, don't the... People realize those microbrews taste better than the watered-down, sugary stuff that they're selling us uh, in the typical, most popular beers, which is, it's really sad that, you know, the most popular beers still continue to be Bud Light and Miller Light, and it's because it's cheap, and people need to realize that because something cheap is cheap doesn't mean it's good and good for you, but they, they have such a huge marketing machine. I mean, just think about all the Super Bowl ads and everything else that they do on a normal basis to brainwash you into wanting these brands as Americans. And even even people overseas, you know, I don't know how many times I've traveled, Alex, and I come across someone that's from another country, and they think it's cool to drink Budweiser, and I'm like, no, you need to be drinking the, the beer. No, no, it's crazy. I see the, all the Mexican immigrants up here, and they're all getting Miller Lite and Budweiser, and I'm like, my God, this Mexican beer t tastes light years better than than the fake New World Order beer, but that's what they want, and then it gives you diabetes. Yeah, one of the things I want to mention, you, me you mentioned Mexico beer. Well, Corona was actually acquired by one of these big companies, and now they're using propylene glycol, something found in airplane de-icing liquid in Corona. So beware of Incredible. Corona. Incredible. I don't like Corona. I, I used to taste good uh, when I was in high school, <laughs> and now it hadn't tasted good in a long time. I don't drink a lot of beer. I don't drink a lot anymore, but, uh, you know, bottom line is that... Uh, I, I, tell you, I think, it, you know, Alex, I think the most interesting part of this story is that right now the FDA does not regulate beer. The Treasury Department, who controls our taxes, is regulating one of the world's most popular drinks. I mean, it's third after water and soda. Yeah, where's the FDA when they're harassing people that sell vitamin C pills and shutting them down? But then meanwhile, because the NFL's tax exempt, these big beer companies, they're all left alone because they're part of the control system. Yeah, and it's 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 really uh, very uh, shameful that the government has allowed this to happen this long. And I hope people support the petition because I think if we can get millions of signatures, I really think this petition, if the if the companies don't act soon enough, I think this petition has the as the uh, you know will be bigger than Subway in the respect that you know in my other past efforts because it, it's a global issue and it's something that's been you know cloaked in secrecy for so long. And I sure. hope people. Don't we need, don't we need German beer purity laws that they've had for 500 years? That meant, because this, nothing's new under the sun. There's been scams going on. I mean, look at the jungle. What is it? T.S. Eliot, the, uh, I believe the true story about the Rockefellers would put chalk in the milk, just like they do in China, or melamine, and, and then babies would die. Th these scams have been going on forever, and, and, and there should be state laws, I think, that if you false advertise and call something beer and it's not, you know, you ought to get shut down. I mean, I'm sick of it. it, it it's a fraud. Yeah, it's an absolute fraud. I mean, the fact that high fructose corn syrup has any place in beer is just ludicrous. That caramel coloring, because they want to put caramel coloring in it because they don't want to spend the money on the right type of malt and the right type of hops. Is, is a is a problem. Upton Sinclair, you know, sorry. That they're getting away with using these really cheap additives and calling it beer is a problem. And that's why I think this transparency is so important. Now, if you sign the petition at foodbabe.com slash beer, Alex, I actually have a link to some beer approved, like approved, food babe approved beers, if you will, that have actually released their ingredients. We're starting to catalog beer manufacturers that are upfront about their uh, ingredients and upfront about all of their processing aids, like uh, isinglass, which is a, a fish swim bladder, and carrageenan that can disrupt the intestinal um, tract. Well, I'll say it bottom line. The, uh... 
bread and circus, gladiatorial events, sports, beer, it's all being used to control the population. And we need to get it to where it's unadulterated. Even if you're not a drinker, folks, you should not want fake beer being sold everywhere and these companies getting away with it. And this is a revolution because this is pure Americana libertarian that the food babe is talking about, where we vote with our dollars and we vote by the decisions we make in our life. This is the type of thing from the Second Amendment right through to national sovereignty, right through to globalism. Take your money away from the big establishment companies. That's why they've got initiatives to ban outdoor markets and, to, and all over the country and to ban farmers markets and harass them with bureaucrats and inspectors and to ban raw milk when it's so safe on record compared to regular boiled down fake milk that isn't even milk. It's like liquid cheese. It's so bad for your heart. Uh, on every front, there. Uh, Forbes asked, why is there a war on lemonade stands nationwide? Because they don't want kids getting the idea. You, I mean, you never see watermelon stands because the state police go stop them and go, you can't be on the side of the road selling watermelons. I, I mean, they're shutting down normal human activity, folks, and creating a synthetic artificial consciousness is what I would call it. Yeah, and uh, you know, the fact that we know more about what's in Windex and Coca-Cola than we do about beer just says it all. Like, it just says it all that, you know, that basically no one's out there safeguarding our food supply, our drink supply. They're, they're not looking out for a best. Remember the freak out last year when we learned that something like 70% of the fish uh, isn't even fish and is fake? Uh, yeah. and, and the whole pink slime thing a few years before that? What I'm saying here is this, from what I've read and what I knew years ago, but you're quantifying it and, and, and really stating how incredible it is and mounting an initiative against this, this, this fraud, this is not beer. When you got a bunch of extracts and corn syrup and beer flavor, that's not beer. And it's disgusting. Just like they put MSG in the Doritos to make you eat more, they put MSG in a lot of these other beers to make you drink too much too. I mean, you can't go out and drink six Grolsches that are, you know, real <laughs> thick German-style beer or Holland beer. But, but let me tell you, you can drink six Budweiser's easy. So it's meant to be gluttonous and to program the brain as well. Well, you know, I cannot wait for these secrets to be revealed. I think these beer industry um, giants are going to be put under a lot of public pressure from not only you, Alex, and your program here, but I think the mainstream media is on this story right now. Just as I'm sitting here, the USA Today and Chicago Tribune and ABC News have released articles. And so um, this is something that's going to be a worldwide issue in 24 hours. And it's you just launched this today or yesterday? This morning, three hours ago. My God, and you see, I mean, this is the power of the people. You're smart, you're intelligent, you're good looking, you're telling the truth. And with the power of the people and with this broadcast as well, I'm very honored that you come here right up front. You are changing the world and forcing MSM to follow what you're doing. And, and I know we've gotten a few thousand extra signatures just now. Go to foodbabe.com, folks. Sign the petition. I should shoot a video after the show today where I sign it. And everybody should shoot a video where you sign it. And, and what you're pioneering here, this form of activism, can spread into every other issue. I want to come back and ask you in the final segment, because I know you're using some well-known PR tactics and things, but you've been so successful at it, how you came up with this particular deployment of, of, of truth journalism and, and, and activism and, and, and that transcends left to right that is just about pro-human. I mean, you were just such an amazing pro-human individual and, and, and just I just bless your soul. By the way, folks, for detoxing, as I got off all the bad food and started trying to eat healthier the last few years, is key to get iodine. The area in the halogen table, all the different bad halogens, the bromide, the bromide, the, you know, the chlorine, that's in all the food in the water. The endocrine disruptors, what it does to your glands. Your thyroid needs the iodine, doesn't get it. And it needs the good, pure iodine from the deep earth crystals that no one else has. We went out and secured not seaweed-based iodine, which is very valuable and needed, we have come out with the actual X2 from seven to 12,000 feet mined here in the United States and put it into an organic palm oil base. We've got videos coming out that actually shows it being ignited, turning into the purple gas, uh, the purple crystals. Uh, it's just simply amazing. In fact, guys, get it from Rob Dew. He showed it to me yesterday. They have the footage of it in the beaker. They put it on a hot plate and it ignites. And, and it's actually the purple gas of only pure iodine. And then that is injected in to the palm oil and, and mixed in a secret process. Well, it's not secret anymore. Groups now shown the whole thing 
this big stainless steel facility, Dr. Group. And you also then fund this operation when you buy the X2 uh, Super Nation iodine or the original uh, Survival Shield or any of the other great products at InfoWarsLife.com or call toll-free 888-253-3139. And please don't forget, for the next week or however long supplies last, we are going to give away free stainless steel stands, a $29 value, free with all ProPure water filtration systems, the best gravity-fed filters out there, 10% off with promo code WATER, already the lowest price. We're the biggest distributor in the world. Now you can get a free stainless steel stand on top of 10% off. That comes out to close to 20% off, ladies and gentlemen. Available right now. Well, it's even more on some of the inexpensive units. Infowarsstore.com or 888-253-3139. Vonnie Hari, you get me so excited. I run over you when you're on. But we'll get you back on in a week or so to see uh, the effects of this. But tell us how specifically how you've been so successful and hopefully how others can duplicate PR campaigns for liberty that, that really change the world. I mean, it's a big deal. And, you know, it's so funny because I've had no media or PR training or anything like that. You know, I was a debater in high school that knew how to research. And so I've been able to use that those skills in order to research this information. And so um, when I started to research this and started to put it on the blog, you know, what I found out very quickly is when you tell the truth, when you tell information that hasn't been told anywhere else, that when you discover new things about how companies are treating people or what how they treat you when you call them or how, um, how there are certain things that you wonder about, you wonder if other people are wondering about too. If you make those ideas ideas known in a, in, a, in a big way, whether it be, you know, your own Facebook page or on your own Twitter account, or maybe it's on your Instagram, like wherever where people like in the world can see this, it has the opportunity to get shared. And I think that's one of the most valuable lessons I learned early on was when I started talking about the injustices in, within the food industry, people wanted to share this information. They wanted to not only safeguard themselves with the information I uncovered, but they wanted their friends and their family to know as well. And so these campaigns that I launch are, are, are specifically targeted to increase the amount of discourse we have in this country. Other points that need to be said, because you were getting into the fact that it's good to be called a conspiracy theorist. That's like being called a heretic when you know people 500 years ago, 600 years ago said the earth wasn't flat. I mean... It, it's like being persecuted by the Nazis. I mean, that's a good thing that you weren't for the Nazis. I mean, this is the new term they've used for 30 years. It doesn't work anymore. So final comments. Yeah, it doesn't work. You know, and there's no conspiracy about this. The only conspiracy that's happening actually is within the beer companies, how they've lobbied the Treasury Department and the government to keep this information secret from us so they can to continue to make really, uh, like, really big bucks. I'm talking billions of dollars uh, by selling us cheap, uh, harmful chemicals to us. And, you know, what's, what's really important here when people start to think about these issues is that one signature, one voice can can magnify thousands. And so I just beg everyone to go to foodbabe.com slash beer and sign the petition because if we get millions of people behind this, these companies have nowhere to hide anymore because if people know about this information, they stop to buy those brands, they start buying other brands, or maybe they stop drinking beer altogether, which I did um, as a result. Uh, you know, and this is what increases the 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 health of the nation, the health of uh, transparency in the in, in our food environment. And I think you know, by doing these type of campaigns led by you know someone like myself, and I hope others have enough courage to do these type of campaigns on their own and their own blogs. I think we can really take over the world because there's more people than there are that work at Monsanto and that work at these beer companies. And, and there's more people collectively that pay for their products that we can actually take back the ownership and start voting with our dollars and doing the right thing. And, you know, before the break, Alex, you asked me, you said, you know, what, what do you think has made your campaign so successful? And I just, I just want to reiterate the fact that Make your voice heard, tell the truth, and ask your friends and family to share it. 
like ask them they said you know tell them like this information is so important will you share it with someone you know that drinks beer or know that eats GMO corn every day in the form of like Subway sandwiches or whatever you know someone that you know and everybody knows someone right everyone knows someone who's drinking Miller Lite or Bud Light like everyone I know knows somebody whether it's your college kid that's in college at a college party or if it's your dad or if it's you know your neighbor or it's the person that brings the brew to the next barbecue we all know someone drinking these brands shoot just walk down the street and go into a bar and start telling people the truth about what's really in your beer and say hey bro you know why you know beer gives such a big belly it's the high fructose corn syrup it's been in there for 30 years you know you ought to drink a local brew and, and yeah. say and say look i'm not henpecking you i care about you yeah, and people will be very thankful and you know i think you, you can know, also I say hey did you hear about the food bait man she's smoking you ought to check her out, and she discovered all this stuff that's in the beer. They want to keep it secret. <laughs> that's exactly right, you know, and... Um well, the thing is, is a lot of people, I know the haters are going to come out. And what they're going to say is they're going to be like, oh, Food Babe wants to take away our beer. She's trying to make a, a mountain of a molehill, you know, and I'm not trying to do any of hey, that. Hey, if that's the case, show us what's in it. We salute you, Food Babe. Great job. We'll talk to you soon. I'm Dr. Edward Groot. Today I'd like to talk about the war on women. You've experienced and heard about the benefits of super male vitality. Now, the new formula has arrived. Introducing the new super female vitality. I have specifically designed this formula to help the body naturally regulate itself without the use of artificial hormones. Key ingredients chosen from the highest quality sources. Each of these ingredients works synergistically with the female body in order to maximize overall vitality. You've heard the reviews and the feedback on how the original super male vitality has revitalized relationships. Now, both the man and the woman can have the revitalization in their own bodies with super male vitality and super female vitality. Secure your super female vitality today from our limited stock at InfoWarsLife.com.